Good morning, everyone. Uh, this morning, the subject was said as God is immutable. Uh, that means he does not change and faithful. And uh, we'll look at this as we go through this morning. Um, I just want to introduce this by uh, two verses. First one is in Malachi chapter three, or as I like to call it, Malachi. Uh, uh, For I am the Lord, I do not change. And secondly, another verse from First Thessalonians chapter five, the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Um, as we think of these two subjects, uh, God is immutable. Uh, I'll explain what immutable means in a moment. And God is faithful. Uh, I hope it really helps embrace us this morning and put us in the middle of God's heart as we think of this great subject of God being immutable and God being faithful. Um, the word uh, mutant uh, is used, for example, of this virus, it mutates, it changes, and that's one of the problems with it because it's constantly uh, developing and it's, uh, its nature. But as far as God is concerned, he is immutable, he does not change. And that's what we'll look at, first of all, this morning. Uh, things have changed uh, in Bethesda, and uh, they go on changing. You remember these days when we had the old center? And uh, then we moved to the tower just last year. And uh, praise God, the, the building is uh, nearing completion. And we're looking forward to it opening pretty soon. Uh, but, uh, you know, things have changed over the last year or two. Uh, many will remember these days when people were able to stand together without masks, able to sing and uh, things have changed and now we are getting used to Zoom technology and uh, in some ways there will be sort of withdrawal symptoms as we come off this system and go back to uh, meeting as a church normally, uh, God willing, in the near future. Uh, things have changed in technology over the years. Um, Gordon Ken will be old enough to remember that kind of uh, phone on the left and uh, I remember the, the phone at the top where you used to have to dial the numbers and uh, then we got cell phones and now we have uh, mobile phones and perhaps many of you are watching on your uh, mobile phone this morning, but things have changed as far as technology over the last 50 years or so. Uh, things have changed in terms of our shopping habits with regard to the virus and you have to queue up outside the co-op or Tesco or Morrison's or whatever. Um, and even the weather has been quite changeable. Uh, just about two weeks ago, we had beast from the East too, and uh, we had uh, all the snow conditions. And uh, I don't know whether any of you have been to church, uh, Rue Church uh, Yard uh, just in the last week or so, but if not, I would encourage you to go perhaps this afternoon when you're out walking and just see it's a carpet of uh, crocuses and uh, snowdrops and it's, it's good to see the season having changed and uh, things change. And uh, some of us may feel like this, like a young man looking in the mirror and seeing an old man looking out and uh, you know that him change and decay and all around I see perhaps is true as we look in the mirror uh, each day. But um, also our sort of uh, moods can change and sometimes uh, people can be a bit unpredictable. You're unsure of whether you're going to catch them on a good day or a bad day as they, their personalities change and one day they're pleasant, next day aggressive. And uh, sometimes our, our situation uh, will change. Uh, sometimes just that conversation with the doctor can change our uh, outlook in a moment, either for the good or bad. And uh, I took this from a website that says, times change, people change, situations change, relationships change, the only thing constant is change. And uh, that was from a website called uh, livelifehappy.com. But uh, I would perhaps argue that there are some things that do not change um, <coughs> as readily. For example, um, the orbit of the Earth around the Sun and the Moon's orbit around the Earth are quite remarkable in the precision. And uh, they do not change, and these things are reliable. There are constants as far as gravity is concerned at the Earth's surface, 
uh, 9.81 meters per second. Speed of light does not change, absolute zero. And all these uh, factors from science, if they changed just marginally, then uh, it would create uh, massive changes in our uh, world and environment. But uh, what we are here to think about this morning is the fact that the Lord does not change despite uh, changes in technology and changes in circumstances and so on. Uh, the Lord does not change. I am the Lord. I do not change. This verse um, starts off with, for I am the Lord. I do not change. Uh, I am is uh, a phrase we read uh, constantly. Uh, Jesus uses this a phrase, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the good shepherd, and so on. And God is the great I am. He is not the great I was. Uh, sometimes we have to remember that. That's, you know, God is with us in our circumstances. And in the 28th of February, 2021, he's not just the, the God of uh, David and Abraham and Solomon and so on. He is uh, our God this morning. And uh, we can know in the situation where we have this uh, spiritual hunger that he is the bread of life, that when we're walking in darkness, he can say, I am the light of the world. When we need uh, that shepherding, pastoring of the Lord, uh, I am the good shepherd of the sheep, etc. I am, and he is constant. Uh, he is like a rock, as we were singing there. Uh, Psalm 61 says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I, in the middle of a storm. And when the waves are crashing and you're looking for a place of security, you, you go to a rock because it's been there for ages. It's dependable. It won't change. It won't shift with the, the growing storm. And as we were singing there, faithful one, so unchanging, ageless one, you're my rock of peace. Lord of all, I depend on you. I call out to you again and again. You are my rock in times of trouble. You lift me up when I fall down. All through the storm, your love is the anchor. My hope is in you alone. And in the midst of a, a world where things are changing and sometimes we feel that we cannot necessarily rely on people, not necessarily because they're untrustworthy, but because uh, situations can be too big for them. They, the current crisis is too big for politicians, frankly. And, uh, you know, in times when we find the sort of uh, props and the things that we have counted as being constant in our life have been changing, uh, it's good to know that we have a rock, an ageless one. God's character does not change. Uh, C.H. Spurgeon says, the Almighty Father did not become the Almighty Tyrant. And so it is that you know, we don't have to worry about catching God in a good day or, a, you know, is he having a, a, a bad mood today? Sometimes we are apprehensive about approaching people because they, they do change. But as far as God's character is concerned, he does not change. The Bible says God is love. That is more than saying simply God loves. But the very nature and the character and the essence of God is God is love. That's what he is, and he expresses that love, uh, such as in the well-known verse in the Bible, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Romans chapter 8, my favorite chapter, I think, in the Bible, um, you know, asks the question, uh, for those who have come to uh, know Christ, as their Savior, uh, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, these things that can come in and pressurize us, those things that can stretch us, those things that can uh, come and hit us from the, the left side when we're unexpecting it and so on. Um, you know, Paul goes on to say, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power. Sometimes we're worried about the future, aren't we? <laughs> but he says there's neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation 
will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the reason for that is God is love. He does not, that is what he is. He, he will not change. And uh, I hope that um, that is an encouragement to you this morning. George Matheson, the blind uh, hymn writer, um, wrote those words, Oh, love that will not let me go. I rest my weary soul in thee. I give thee back the life I owe, that in thine ocean depths its flow may a richer, fuller be. Not only is God love, but God is light in terms of uh, his character. He just doesn't light up things, but God is light. Um, and, uh, you know, to some extent that might make us feel uncomfortable, the fact that God is light, because as he shines into the dark recesses of our hearts and our minds, the things that are dark and we, we want to cover up and we hope people don't find out about. God is light and he searches into our, uh, into our hearts and into our minds. To me, this is a, a comforting thing in as much as God knows the very worst about us, but he loves us just the same. God is light. When, a, when you go for a, an operation, um, for a disease or cancer or whatever, um, the surgeon wants to shine the light in so that he knows the condition so he can treat it. And so it is that God is light. James chapter 1 says, Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters, for every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. He is consistent. There's no darkness in God at all. And again, George Matheson wrote, O light that followest all my way, I yield my flickering torch to thee. My heart restores its borrowed ray, that in thy sunshine's blaze its day may brighter fairer be. God is just. We thought of that uh, a few weeks ago with David Galloway. God is holy. He does not change. God in his character is immutable. He does not change. But I also want to think not just about God's character. I want to think about God's form because I think that the form of God does change in some cases. Um, for example, in John chapter 1, it tells us there uh, that the word became flesh. And this is remarkable that the almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, um, became flesh. He, he was translated into our language uh, so that we could understand. He became flesh and he uh, experienced the kind of situations that you and I uh, face. He experienced bereavement, he experienced tiredness and, uh, you know, pain and so on. The word became flesh. Not only that, but God did change in terms of form, in terms of the Lord Jesus changed his form. For we know the grace of the Lord Jesus, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. And God did not change his character, but the Lord Jesus came and he became something that he was not before, a change of form. Philippians chapter 2 says, Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. He didn't claim some kind of greasy pole in terms of trying to make himself uh, or even claim the, the position he rightly had in terms of being a high being, but by taking the form of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in the form as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even the death on the cross. And that's remarkable, isn't it? That the almighty God should love us so much that he should send his son into the world and he should be not only become like us in terms of our human form, 
but he should go to the cross and die for us. And this is the most remarkable verse, I think. Second Corinthians chapter 5. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. God, Son, the Holy One, who did not change his character, yet bore my sin upon the cross. Amazing love. Other things that do not change, the moral law of God does not change. The Ten Commandments um, have, are still there. The Word of God um, is constant. It does not change. The way of salvation is the same as it's always been by faith alone, in Christ alone. Um, but the other thing that does not change is human nature. Uh, you know, we think today is uh, we've got a lot of immorality, but it's there was a lot of immorality thousands of years ago as well. That you know, it's something that pervades society. It uh, human nature has not changed. Perhaps you know, moral standards have. Uh, changed some for the better, some for the worst. Uh, since the swinging 60s, um, there's been quite a change in terms of uh, the way we approach different moral subjects and uh, the standards and the morals and the ethics of society has changed quite uh, dramatically over these last 60 years or so. Um, but God's ways have not changed. His standards are the same in 2021 as they were in 1961. And secondly, uh, as we were looking at the subject this morning, God is immutable. He does not change. He is also faithful. And I think these two are linked in many ways, the faithfulness of God and the unchanging nature of God. Hebrews chapter 6 says that because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what has, was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to Christ take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. And uh, I think we can be encouraged this morning by the fact that God is not only unchanging, but when he says something, he means that he will not change in terms of the, uh, the promises he makes. They are reliable. They are secure. And it goes on in Hebrews chapter 6. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure, it enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. And he has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. And, uh, uh, you know, perhaps you're new to the Bible and you don't understand all this language about inner sanctuaries and curtains and forerunners and whatnot in Melchizedek. Uh, I don't expect you to ne necessarily pick up all these points this morning. But what I would encourage you to just realize is that we have this hope, this certain hope. It, you know, we can rely on this hope because God has said it. God is unchanging. And we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. When a ship was out in a storm in the olden days, uh, sometimes the, the ship was unable to get into the harbor because the harbor was, uh, you know, not able to, accommodate the ship or the ship was too large for a small harbor and so what they did was they let down the anchor and they put the anchor inside the harbor and because even though the ship was outside the harbor the security of the anchor being in the harbor meant that the ship was secure and safe and we have an anchor for our soul that is in Jesus and we can rely on him even when we're going through the storms. You know, one of the uh, programs I love to watch is Match of the Day. And uh, 
very often, uh, most times I know the scores uh, before um, match of the day crops up. Uh, you know how you're meant to leave the room uh, while they announce the scores <laughs> if you want to watch match of the day. I don't do that. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I hear the scores and I, um, and I know the outcome of the game because I know the score in advance. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit like that, you know, that Jesus has already won the victory. And what we're seeing here is this sort of match played out. We're seeing, um, you know, events and so on. But the fact is, we already know the outcome. We know that Jesus has uh, conquered death and sin, and uh, we can rely on him. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Don't move about. <laughs> uh, be uh, anchored to the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 says, For all the promises of God are in him. Yes and amen to the glory of God through Jesus for us. And he has given us his Holy Spirit as a guarantee. This uh, salvation we have comes absolutely guaranteed. We've got the deposit paid the Holy Spirit comes uh, when we come to Christ as believers and we are given the Holy Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee that God has established us in Christ. It says in uh, Hebrews chapter 13, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. So we have this confidence. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? And God has given us this character, this promise. And, you know, if he betrays this, it undermines his character, which is impossible. And then it goes on in Hebrews 13. And um, it says, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He will be the same Jesus today as he will be tomorrow. The, the tomorrow you're perhaps worrying about. The next week that you're worrying about. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings. The old hymn, Abide With Me, uh, fast falls the even tide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, so abide with me. Swift to its close ebbs out life's little day. As joys grow dim, its glories pass away, change and decay, and all around I see, O thou who changest not, abide with me. God is immutable and faithful. He tells us in 1 John chapter 1, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. It's crazy to try and deceive other people. It's more crazy to try and deceive yourself. It's even more <laughs> crazy to try and deceive God. But if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. He has promised that he will do that. And so we can be open. We don't have to hide. We don't have to pretend to be holy in the presence of God in terms of putting up some kind of pretense. We just come honestly, just as I am. 
uh, before God, and he is faithful and just and will forgive us. Second Timothy chapter 2 says, if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. And so we often as uh, Christians feel our feelings and we are faithless, if we're honest. But the one constant is that God remains faithful. It tells us in Lamentations chapter 3, uh, when we're going through difficult times, this is a great comfort, I think, to many. I have been deprived of peace. I've forgotten what prosperity is, so I say my splendor is gone and all that I had hoped for from the Lord. I remember my affliction and my wanderings, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them and my soul is downcast within me. I don't know whether there's anybody this morning that feels like that and can identify with Lamentations chapter 3. But he says in verse 21, yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, and his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And God is there reliable and secure he is the faithful god deuteronomy chapter 7 says now therefore that so sorry know therefore that the lord your god is god the faithful god who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations he is faithful and reliable he does not go back in his promise the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. He abounds in faithfulness. Um, I heard the story from a sister just a couple of weeks ago about David Sushi. I don't know whether there's any Poirot, Agatha Christie fans, but um, David Sushi is the actor who plays Poirot. But um, I was interested in reading about his conversion to uh, Christianity. He was um, from a Jewish family, but he was antagonistic. And he began to wonder about spiritual things when his uh, grandfather passed away. And he was on the edge of atheism. And he was in a hotel room in Seattle in 1986 while they were filming over there. And he looked in the drawer beside the bed for a Gideon Bible and it was not there. So he went down to a bookshop uh, next day and got a New Testament and started to read it. And uh, he read through the book of Romans. He, he'd always been interested in Rome, so he thought he'd pick up the book of Romans. And he didn't understand the first seven chapters. And then he came to chapter eight, Romans chapter eight. And uh, the whole thing came to life for him. There is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And some of the verses that I've quoted earlier, and he says, this is the book that I've been searching for all my life. And uh, he loves the, the book. He was saying that, you know, he feels there's a, a lack of reverence for the Bible, that we've become all too familiar with it. People died for this book to get it into our own language. Um, we forget that the English Bible, which we can pull off a bookshelf, throw in our bags and walk away. This is a big book for which people gave their lives. It survives everything and God reveals himself through it. It's unique. It's the only book in the world where Christ appears. And uh, uh, I'll pass on some of the uh, other comments. But, you know, he has left a legacy, he says, of uh, having uh, recorded a reading through the entire Bible. And you can buy mp3 cds uh, which i've got the entire bible recorded by david sushi but you know there's been that change when we, we came to the the word of god it uh, became alive to him and it changed and transformed his life and that's the effect you know that when we come to god to the word of god and he speaks to us don't just be hearers 
Matthew chapter 7 says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. When you become a Christian, you don't get an exemption certificate from, from rain and streams rising and winds blowing and storms coming against your house. But built on the rock of Christ, you stand. By contrast, Jesus said, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. Build your life on the rock. John Newton said, I am not what I ought to be. I am not what I want to be. I am not what I hope to be. But still, I am not what I used to be. And by the grace of God, I am what I am. When we come to the word of God, let it change us. I don't know whether you've had this experience in your life of coming to know the amazing grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're able to say with Newton that there's been sort of two halves to your life. Uh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. That's what I was in the past. But now I am found. I was blind, but now I see. First Thessalonians chapter 5, which I read earlier, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. It's not a do-it-yourself religion. It's not a Bethesda religion. It's not what uh, any of the members of the leadership of Bethesda can do for you that's going to change. It's what God is going to do in your life. He will do it. The one who has called you is faithful. He will do it. And so in the midst of thinking about the subject of God is immutable, God is faithful, right in the middle, I hope you can place yourself in this security. The rock, his way is perfect for all his ways are justice, a God of faithfulness and without iniquity. Just and upright is he. God does not change. But could I be changed this morning? You know, if we've come to this service and we just are the same at uh, the back of 12 as we were at the back of 10 o'clock, there's been no point in coming. <laughs> Let us not just merely listen to the word and so deceive ourselves, do what it says. As James 1 says, anyone who listens to those words and does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law of God that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Change your whole eternity from a destination of from hell to heaven, from a destination of hopelessness to hope, from a destination of death to life, from darkness to light. Come this morning and repent of your sin and be right with God. Change your whole eternity starting today. Amen.